So I've been using an iPad for all of my photo and video editing for the past nine months, but should you? What's up y'all, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada, and I do all my editing and delivering for my clients with the iPad Pro 11 inch fourth generation M2 chip iPad. Today we're gonna go through the main apps that I use, a whole bunch of the accessories that I've found helpful, uh, my overall pros and cons with this setup and whether or not I think it would be a good option for somebody like yourself to use. I don't wanna take forever on the apps here because there's lots of reviews that you can go to and check them out, but here's sort of a broad vision of what I feel like is good and bad about each app. Starting with Lightroom, I really like editing on Lightroom overall on the iPad. I think using the Magic Pencil is really comfortable and it really, feels a little bit more hands-on than using a mouse. I found overall that the app was pretty decently responsive and quick to any of the changes I would make. It maybe lagged a little bit more than I was used to on a desktop, but overall it was pretty good. There's a few things though that are lacking in the Lightroom app that really bothered me. One of them being no calibration tool. I love the calibration tool and not having that is just super frustrating. It also lacks a lot of the functionality in masking that we've gotten over time in Lightroom. Like, you know, the AI masking and all that stuff is just not even close to being there. You have basically like detect subject, detect sky, and then the basic ones. There's workarounds, but I don't want workarounds. I just, I want the full functionality of the app, you know? The last thing I found is that Lightroom doesn't really communicate with Photoshop super well. I'll like send something over to Photoshop and it'll just not happen. It'll open up Photoshop and then nothing will happen. I'll try sending it again. Nothing will happen. I've checked permissions. I've checked everything and it works sometimes, but a lot of the times it doesn't. And that's just annoying. I mean, these apps are by the same developer. They should work together, right? Moving on to Photoshop. It's okay. If I'm making like basic edits, you know, I'm trying to put together a thumbnail for YouTube or something like that. I can do it. It's, it's not ideal though. It lacks so much of the functionality of actual Photoshop. I think it probably will get there, but it's always a question of like, how long do you want to wait for the technology to catch up to what you need versus just going with something that already works, right? For video editing, I'm mainly doing things in DaVinci Resolve, or at least I'd like to, but the big problem that I find with DaVinci Resolve is that it's very buggy and crashy. I, I have problems all the time with certain codecs, and that's really frustrating. I don't wanna have to shoot in ProRes all the time because it just eats up so much you know, space on my memory cards, but that's kind of the only way to get a smooth experience and to not have any issues when I'm exporting. Having said that, I do think overall it is an extremely capable app. Like it's way better than I thought it would be. I thought they would just pull back everything. And you know, when you first get it, all you have is the cut and color page. But if you have a keyboard, you can get all the other ones using shortcuts and then you can get the full thing. I think the color page on it is awesome. It works really, really well. My only issue is that because I'm just on an iPad and it's small, it means the window I'm using to actually do all my coloring is even smaller. So like everything you're seeing me do is on this tiny little iPad. And honestly, it's, it's starting to get to me. It's, it's frustrating. Speaking of LumaFusion, it's great for basic edits for very simple audio stuff. If you just wanna put out a simple YouTube video, then it's, it's gonna do well for you. I, I do quite like it. The user interface is awesome on it actually. I find it's very, very intuitive. And I think that speaks to the fact that this was an app that was actually made for iPad as opposed to being a desktop program that they then tried to make work for an iPad. Despite what you might hear on YouTube, I would say that the color grading on LumaFusion, that experience is not great. Like I just find that every time you make a change, it's just like a very hard change. Like I just, I feel like it's like, it's like a blunt force object as opposed to in DaVinci when you can really fine tune things. And of course, that's what DaVinci was originally made for, right? This color grading tool. So that makes sense, but it's just not what I would like it to be. Lastly, I would just say all the graphics and transitions that are available in it, they are not very good. I mean, the base ones kind of suck, but that's fine. You can get plugins and all that stuff, but then you're just paying more, but you would do that on a laptop anyway. So, you know, that stuff costs money because people have to make it and that's how it should be. The last one, Final Cut Pro. This is one I was excited about because it seems like it should be a really good solution. It's a native app made by Apple, so it, it should work well. But there's a total non-starter for me is the fact that you can't edit off of a hard drive and it saves everything locally. I, I can't do that. I have a base model with 128 gigs. It's, it's not possible. Moving on to accessories. The thing about an iPad is it's kind of like a cinema camera. Like you need a whole bunch of accessories to really get the full functionality out of what it can do for you. So for my setup right away, I realized I was for sure gonna need a few things. I needed a case, 
I needed a screen protector, keyboard, mouse, magic pencil, USB-C hub, card readers, dongles, a stand. There's, there's all this stuff. That's a lot of stuff and, and it starts to get expensive. You could really easily spend like a thousand extra dollars just on accessories. And at that point, why, why not just buy a laptop that solves most of those problems? At a minimum, I can't really go anywhere without a USB-C dongle, a magic pencil, and like an external hard drive of some sort, right? That's not a huge deal, but if I wanna treat it like a mobile workstation, that's not everything I need. I, I do actually need a keyboard and I do actually need a mouse. Sure, I could get a case that has an integrated trackpad and keyboard, but I find that that's really tight and everything is kind of on top of itself. Like if this is my setup and I am trying to type and use the trackpad at the same time and move stuff around, it's just, it's all tight, right? Because this is such a small setup. That's one of the pros of it, but it, in that case, it's kind of a con. The other thing is that those are expensive and all of a sudden that price point for this excessively priced iPad is going up and up and up. And then I'm spending all this money that I could have just spent on a laptop. And that's what I keep coming back to. I, could have just spent it on a laptop. Now, I happened to already have a keyboard and a mouse and I didn't want to spend that extra money, so that was fine, but that just means that there's separate items I have to take with me as opposed to just being integrated, right? So, something to note. The biggest frustration I have is the whole USB-C hub dongle situation that I have. Okay, so let's say we want to take something off of this. This is a pro grade reader. It has a CF Express type B and a SD card reader. So if I want to take something off of this and I want to put it onto an external hard drive, I need to have a dongle that will have more than one uh, USB-C port that w works as not just like a power delivery because this one has a power delivery on one side and then it has a 10 gigabyte per second on the other side. That's cool but if I want to take something off of this I need to plug it into here and then if I want to put it onto a hard drive I need to have another 10 gigabyte per second port. Now to be fair, they do make those. You can get ones that have like five of those all at once. The problem with those is that they, they limit the amount of functionality that I have in other ways. Like they don't have like a little port here for uh, my headphones, which I need because you know, the iPad doesn't have any way to play headphones. They don't have an ethernet port, things like that. They don't have a micro SD reader, all these little things. So it just means I have to put more stuff in and that's frustrating. Do, do you see why that's frustrating? And, and then add on to that the fact that you can't eject media. Like if you put an SD card in on a laptop, you hit eject and it ejects it and makes sure it's safe. With the iPad, you just pull it out and hope for the best. Apple says it's not a concern, but honestly, I've had more issues in this last nine months with corrupted files, with issues with reading things improperly than I ever had before using a laptop. So. I don't know. One other thing that just occurred to me that is really frustrating is that you can't actually format an external hard drive on the iPad. So I have to borrow my partner's laptop to format my external hard drive just so that I can, you know, go use it again after the iPad has caused it to corrupt. So yeah, cool, cool, cool solution. So that's the iPad accessories. Now, what are the basic pros and cons of this setup that I have right now? The pros, I would say, number one is that it is super portable. I mean, I can just take this. I have like a little case on here, my Apple Pencil. As long as I have the photos on here that I need, I can go to a cafe and hang out and go edit. And that's really nice. I like doing that. That's part of my workflow. And I enjoy being able to do that so easily. Number two is that it's cheap. It's not a super expensive setup. As is, this is a ton of power for the price. You can get this for a very, very good price right now and you are gonna get a hell of a lot out of it. I find the user interface on this really good. It's very intuitive, it's easy to use. If you're used to using an iPhone, this will feel very natural to you. If you're used to using a laptop from Apple, it will also feel very natural to you. They, they did a great job with it and they obviously put a lot of effort into that. It's nice. It, it, it does what you expect it to do in that sense. Finally, I, I think it's fun. Like I like editing my photos on this. I like the idea of editing the videos on this when it works well. Overall, I, I think the experience of this thing is, is great. And, and that's important. If you enjoy using it, you're gonna wanna use it more, right? But there's some serious cons. And the biggest one that frustrates me is that nothing just seems to have as much functionality as it would if I just bought a laptop. Every app and every other little thing on this seems to just be kind of like, it's sort of like they've throttled it a little bit to make sure that you're still gonna 
go buy a laptop and that's probably what they've done they could probably make this more functional but then why would you go buy a laptop another thing is the small screen is really starting to get to me i can't handle doing my video editing on a small screen where the actual preview is like tiny 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 and i have to like squint to see what my colors look like i also find that a lot of times my ipad will overheat you know, if I have it plugged in and I'm working on it and I have an external hard drive set up and all that, it, it overheats. I have to take it off of its stand and let it just sit and not touch it for a while so that it'll cool down. And it won't give me like an overheating warning. It's just everything will start to work really poorly. Like I'll start getting all these glitches and shit and then I'm just left with like, okay, I have to abandon what I'm doing right now so that this iPad doesn't freak out and just wait and that that's wasted time and effort and it's it's just really frustrating so ultimately the question here is would i recommend going with an ipad as your only device for your photo and video editing needs yes and no yes if your plan for this is that you're mostly just going to use it for like daily activities simple photo editing simple video editing and like you travel a ton and you just need this tiny discreet little thing or if you're going to be using this as a secondary device that you can bring with you on set that you can bring with you around to preview things that you can work on when you're not at your desktop this is an awesome option so i would for sure recommend it in that situation where i wouldn't recommend this is if you're somebody who needs to use photoshop for anything other than the very simple tasks you are going to be so frustrated by this if you're doing heavy editing or you're using, you know, higher res files or you need to do multiple overlays or whatever, you're also going to be really frustrated with this experience. It's just not going to hold up with the base model. Now, maybe if you bump up and you go to more RAM and you go to more, you know, all that stuff, you can get there. But at that point, it's costing as much as just getting a laptop. So I don't know why you would do that. If you need full functionality from all these apps, like if you're used to using these apps and they're all the little things that are in there are actually things you use. Like for me, like calibration is super important and I don't have that in Lightroom and that just pisses me off. If you are like me, this is going to be frustrating for you. And finally, I would say don't buy this if you can scrape together the cash to get the laptop you actually need. If you can put together enough funds to get the laptop that you really want, I would not even consider spending money on this. I just don't think it's worth it. So a bit of a mixed bag there, right? Like, yes, I would recommend it in some cases. No, I wouldn't in others. There's things I love about it. There's things I hate about it. But overall, I'm ready to get a laptop and I sure do hope I can put together the funds to make that happen soon. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know, are you editing on an iPad? Is that something that you've used? What's your experience with it? Any tips, anything that you can put in the comments for other people, your advice, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. As usual, go out, create something. Let me see it and uh, have a great day. Peace.